Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? What's up? NFL Week 16 gambling picks against the spread. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is Winning Cures Everything. You can find everything about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Get that sweet jam in, of course. Always good stuff. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. All of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Make sure and leave some comments. Tell us what your picks are this week. We are getting ever so closer to 500. I believe you're already there, aren't you? I don't know. You're, if if not, you are really close, and and you're already I, I up didn't money. Take it last week, so yeah, you, we both went three and two last week. You can see all of our picks from the last four seasons, all the way through, over at winningcureseverything.com. Just click up on gambling picks right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's right. Smack apparel. Smackapparel.com is a sponsor on the show. Go check them out for yourself. They got awesome stuff. Awesome novelty shirts, just good-looking shirts, pro teams, college teams, whatever. And on top of that, no matter how big your order is, you enter the promo code WIN, that's W-I-N, they're going to give you 20% off of that bad boy. 20% off. Use the promo code WIN. Easy. And on top of that, they're going to make it even sweeter for you. $40. If your order is over $40, they're going to ship it to you for free. It's basically like using Amazon, right? I mean, you got an Amazon Prime subscription, right? Yes. Which means all your shipping's for free, right? I'm a, I'm a normal American. So that's what we're saying. This is like Amazon Prime. You just got to make sure you hit that $40, $40 threshold, and you will be able to do that because there are some awesome shirts over there. So go check out smackapparel.com. They got some fun stuff. I promise you will be impressed. You will enjoy it. You will want to buy something. So smackapparel.com, promo code WIN, W-I-N, you get 20% off. Next up, Tunica, Mississippi. They are the South's premier sports gambling destination. They sponsor the show. They got fun stuff going on. They got concerts. They got awesome golf courses for when it warms back up, of course. Because right now, I would not want to be out there playing golf. No. man. I got, I, a so, that, I got a buddy that played this weekend, though. That's well. This weekend wasn't bad. Mm, okay. I, I drove... Through my parents' house earlier. Maybe a baby. It's, look, this morning, it was it was kind of rainy. It was in the 30s. Yep. My parents live on a golf course. I drove through to drop off my son. Multiple sets of people out there playing. Yeah, no, golf is one of those things where if you're addicted to it, you, you just you just got to do it. I just I I can't get with it. Like I love playing golf. Yeah, I know. but I, I it's got to be. I I'm gotta be comfortable. Way. I'm the same way. I don't. I can't play in the heat. And I can't play in the cold. <laughs> but I am a very high maintenance individual. Hey, you and I, man, you and I went out and played what in like June or July. Yep. And it was steamy yeah, outside. It was terrible. Hate it. At, at least we, I do. I do exactly what I do on this show all the time. Ice cold beer I is what will solve that. I just complain. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> It just gets me liquored up, and I complain more. There you go. Now I get even more pissed off. All right, so if you do like playing golf, Tunica, Mississippi has got plenty of fun courses down there. Awesome stuff. They got concerts. They got golf courses. They got good steakhouses. They got awesome places to watch big-time sporting events, and they got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on all of that over at tunicatravel.com. Go check it out for yourself. You will not be disappointed. Let's go ahead and get into the gambling picks for this weekend. Like I said, we both went three and two last week. We uh we have kind of started to figure this out. I don't think either of us really liked the lines this week. Uh, no, it, they one were a lot I bigger like. than we thought. One, one game I like. Well, there you go. No, that's not true. I guess the more I look at, I like them all. I got five this week. You got four. I got four. You got four. All right, I'll start us off then. Let me go on and and fire away. Fire away. Uh, by the way, T.J. Reeves will be on with us from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. He is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. He's going to talk some uh, some underdogs this week. So he'll be on with us at the end of the podcast, and so make sure you stick around for that. Game number one for me, the Pittsburgh Steelers got beat at home last week by the Buffalo Bills. That makes this game pretty important. They got to win. They, they are still in a prime position to make the playoffs. All they got to do is win. And they got to go to the well, they New York Jets. Do a little Jets. more than win. Uh, well, I mean, they no, they just got to win. 
They own the tiebreaker over so the you're, okay over you're the just taking the money line then. No, no, no. I'm they, uh, I'm saying they just got to win to make the playoffs. Okay, but I think they're going to win by more than what this line is, which is only three. Okay, I think that the the Steelers defense is going to be able to shut down this Jets offense. I think you're going to see Mika Fitzpatrick get some picks. You're going to see all kind of guys get some picks. All right? So, or should I start calling him Minka Palomalu? I think that's what I might do. Because he's exactly that for them. Mm, Devin Bush exactly. going to look good. One guy's a Hall of Famer and the other guy's a rookie. Hey, yeah, but he's he's got a, a Hall of Fame rookie, uh, Hall of Fame sophomore year right now. Because he was a rookie last year, right? Yeah. Either way, the Steelers are putting a whooping on the Jets this week. You can go on and count it. You can go on and cash the check. I'm telling you, that ticket will pay out. Steelers minus three, putting 100 bucks on that bad boy. It seems like one of those weird fluky games where the Jets are going to win, and nobody knows how or why. Let's go, Pittsburgh. Duck Let's Hodges. go, Pittsburgh. We got this. You bet money on Duck Hodges. Hey, Duck, Duck got all of his interceptions out of the way last week. Okay. All of them. All four of them. Gone. Right. Done. That's in the rear view. Now we're looking ahead to the Jets. Awesome. He, Let's go. He just doesn't kill us. <laughs> he just doesn't kill us until he does. I'm going. All right. So I, I like the like the old saying, you ride until she bucks here, you don't ride at all. It's a little fitting here. Been riding the Broncos lately. They they bucked you last they week. Bucked though. me last week. <laughs> I'm back on. Getting back up. Back home. Get back up. Mainly because and they're playing the toothless lines. This and is, and the this, lines are not the Chiefs. If I if I if I need a week for Drew Locke to have a bounce back. Now, last week was predictable. I should have seen this coming. I've got this rookie who started two games and looked great in two games. It's the NFL, brother. You ain't looking great in three games, though. No. But if you need to feel a little bit better about yourself, you bring the lines in and you kick the crap out of them. Yeah. And uh, if they're not the worst defense in the league, they're they're up there. Uh, I like the Broncos. I like the Broncos here. And I'm laying seven points. All these lines are so much bigger than I thought they were going to be. And I only like favorites this week. I like the Lions. I mean, I like the Broncos to, to kind of handle the Lions. I, could see I think that. this defense is really good. They're that's not Patrick Mahomes on the other side of the field. Okay. Now, I think I think Fangio's got this team looking the way he wants them to, right? I now. agree. And I think getting your butt whipped in a snow game against the Chiefs is nothing to frown about. Like that yeah. that is not a a a criteria for a bad team. That no, happens I agree. to a lot of people. Yeah. The Chiefs are really good at football. Uh Lines or not. Yeah. I, I, I would lay the seven points. I think they can win this by two scores. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I like that pick. That's a good pick. Next game up for me, the Texans on Saturday are going to the Bucks, going down to Tampa Bay after a hard-fought divisional win in Nashville last week. They're feeling good about themselves. They got a leg up in the division race. We go into the playoffs. da 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 da, da. Tampa Bay has won four straight. That offense looks good. The Texans' offense, I don't, I don't know. I it, I mean, they look fine. They they look fine, and they got Deshaun Watson. So of course, you know, they ought to be able to play. They'll be able to score some points. I like the Bucks plus three at home here. They look like they are coming out on a mission, man, and I am all in on that mission. Okay. I, I, look, I expect Jameis to throw an interception or two or three. But he can throw three early. picks. He's going to get out of the way early. And and he can throw three picks and still throw four touchdowns. I need Jameis to throw three picks in this game and three picks in the next game. He is six picks away from being the first ever 30-30 guy. Yeah. He's only one touchdown away. I think he's got 29 touchdowns. He's going to get that. I need him. I need six picks in two games. I know that's a hell of a If anybody can do it. He can do it. Jameis can do it, baby. You got that right. I want to see a 30-30 man in the NFL. And I'm I'm game with him throwing picks so long as they cover that three. That's, right. That's all I'm saying. That's right. I need that ticket to cash, baby. You still need to be pick so, sixes. Bucks plus three for $100. Hook go. it up. There you go. Who, uh, who you got next? Uh, My next game, I am going to San Francisco. So they came home. They got beat by the Falcons. We covered this a little bit in the uh, big game preview. Um. I think the Rams are the good bad team when they pay when they pay when they play bad defenses. 
they look really good. They can control the line of scrimmage. Yep. They control the flow of the game. They play from ahead, and and they're a very dangerous team. When anybody gives them a pass rush, when when Jared Goff doesn't have seven to ten seconds to sit in the pocket, he doesn't know how to play football. He's just not good. The 49ers aren't going to give you seven to ten seconds. They're not going to give no. you f- three to five seconds. No. You're you're going to have to get the ball out quickly. I don't know that they can do that. I think the 49ers route. They get back. They're pissed off. They lost. They are in a fight for their lives. For that division, for the top spot in the NFC, they have to continue to win. They definitely cannot afford to lose divisional games. They got to take this one. They need it. The Rams are desperate. They need help in their desperation to get in the playoffs. That help's not coming. They're not getting it. They don't have a chance. This is all about the 49ers. This is all about Jimmy G. I think they'll have no problem scoring. Uh, It's amazing to me that Aaron Donald is the best player in football. And I don't deny that. I use quotations when I say that, and I'm not saying it mockingly. But it's incredible that he has made almost no impact on any game this year yeah but yet he's the best player in football i I just think you can scheme him out of games yeah because he's all they have when when they had sue with him i mean you can't double both of them no and and fowler every now and then will make big plays and 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 they but but he ain't he's not sue no he's just not it's just amazing to me that that Aaron Donald's so good, but he can be taken out of games so yeah. easily. Yeah, I agree. So I'm I'm riding the 49ers, and they're going to win it on the front seven, shutting the Rams' def- offense down. Rams' yeah. offense will get nothing. 49ers minus six and a half for 100? Yeah. 100 bucks. 100 bucks. Next one up for me, the Cowboys are going to Philadelphia, and they're only giving up two and a half. Now, you can get it three some spots. You get it two and a half at other spots. Make sure you shop around. Obviously, you want to get that extra half point uh, because I could see this being a field goal game. But I think the Cowboys are the better team. Like, I understand that both of them have looked bad. The Cowboys have played a tougher schedule. The Eagles have no wide receivers. They got nobody making plays. And if your only offense is Miles Sanders in that running game, you might have problems against the Cowboys. It's a tough offense. So... All I'm saying is, I don't know that the Cowboys are significantly better than the Eagles, but this is for the division, and you saw what that Cowboys team could do last week. Yeah, I I, I like the – it's so scary right now because they're just not consistently good, and they can lose to bad, bad teams, like teams far worse than the Eagles. But but the problem is, is when – if both of these teams play their best football, I think the Cowboys win every time. Yeah. The problem is, is will you get the Cowboys playing good football at all? Not even their best. Will they even show up to play good football? And I think they will. I think they will, too. I think they have to. Yeah, I think they will. So I'm, I'm putting 100 bucks on the Cowboys minus 2.5 on the road in Philly. What, uh, what you got for your third game here? Another favorite. I'm going to Chicago. The, the first... First part of solving a problem is admitting that you have one. You fold a hand as soon as you know it's a loser. The Bears are losers. They just are. Mitch Trubisky's a loser. I've tried to make him a thing. I've tried to think that they can find a way to to, to manufacture points, to work around his ineptitude and, and find things that he's good at. Matt Nagy is not good at finding things that anybody's good at. You either have to fit in his system or you don't. He's Joe Moorhead. You know how I feel about that kind of coach. If, yes, I do. If, if you have to have elite <laughs> talent for you to be a good coach, guess what? You're not a damn good coach. No. Well, if I had all all star players, then I'd be a really good coach too. But he's not, and Trubisky's not. And his offense is inept. And if you can't score points, you cannot beat the Chiefs. Agreed. Because they can score on everybody. We have somehow. I love. Lamar and I have fallen in love with Lamar and that's not changing but I'm here to tell you that if you've forgotten Patrick Holmes is good at football then you're you're gonna get caught 
Yep. Because the dude is still a stud. And Andy Reid is still one of the top two or three best coaches in all of football. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think they win this game handily. You got to lay five and a half on the road. That doesn't scare me. No. no it, it's less than a touchdown. I think you're fine. I, I like the pick. Mitchell's bad. I like the pick. Next one up, and I think it's the same one for both of us, but we'll we'll get there. The Bengals going to Miami. This is your last game? Yeah, I've got one more after this. Okay. I like this Dolphins team. I like them better than I like the Bengals. Oh, yeah. The Dolphins fight, man. Yeah. Like, they, it, it, especially with Fitzpatrick, a quarterback. Like, it's. There's a lot of coaches that are in the conversation for coach of the year. What Brian Flores is doing is. Miraculous. Uh, Bill yes. Belichick's not winning four football games with this team. I've, I've got the I, Dolphins. I I'm, I'm just saying, A, because at some point in time, he's just going to start murdering people. Yeah. And they won't they won't be able to line up the 53-man roster because yeah. he's just going to start cutting people's Achilles. I've I've got the Dolphins under four and a half for the season. Yeah, that's not happening. I'm I'm terrified. Well, they're winning this game, and that gives them four. Yeah. So oh, and they play the Patriots next week. You're, you're four and a so half I, safe. I should be fine. You're safe. They're not beating the Pats at New England. No. Um, but uh, – but, it got a little hairy. It shouldn't have been this close. I thought they I thought they would win two at most. Well, because we thought they were in tank mode, and the they're, ownership is. They forgot to tell Brian that their their talent is worse than the Browns team that went zero and sixteen. Their talent's worse than the Bengals. Yeah, significantly. Significantly worse than the Bengals. And Flores, those guys fight. I'm gonna tell you, when they get good, if they can hang on to Brian, those his players fight for him. Yes. They fight like hell for him, and they know they have nothing to play for, and they know their ownership doesn't want them, and it doesn't yeah. matter. This is the biggest F you to your own owner. I mean, this is – Yeah, it's insane. This is modern-day Cleveland Indians in Major League. Yes. Our owner is trying to lose. Screw them. Screw yeah. them. Let's go out there and let's win as many games as we can. Now, now they're not Major League. They're not winning a pennant. No, no, no. I mean, they're, they're still going to end up 4-12. and 12. Yes. But, damn, that's – that's four games better than they want to be. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. That and this Bengals team, they are they're bad. They they, they have bad. no identity. Um no, I will say this, Joe Mixon, like he's shown up. Like it when they, he's healthy, they, he's good, but their offensive line's not real good. No. So I mean it's hard and, for him to get anything. And the defense ain't good either. No, that that's always been their staple is they could run the football. Andy Dalton doesn't turn the ball over. The reason they made all these wild card playoff games is because they run the football, they don't turn it over, and they play great defense. Yeah. And or if not great defense, good defense. Good like enough defense. Top half defense. Average, better than average defense. And they they play significantly below average on defense. And their offensive line is significantly below average. Andy Dalton still doesn't usually turn the ball over much. I mean, last week he did a lot, but Stephon Gilmore's not on the – the Dolphins don't have one of those. No. Um, no, they sure don't. And, uh, and, but and, uh, yeah. I don't think it matters here. I think the Dolphins at home win this game. Uh, it's a pick them. So all we got to do is win. Yeah, we are I, we are collective on this pick yeah, right I've, here. Yeah, I've got 100 bucks on it. you got got 100 bucks on it. Dolphins. Dolphins. They're, yeah. they're going to win this game. I yeah. like it. Last game for me before we get to TJ – the Packers at the Vikings. Vikings have to win because that they, they, they this is to win the division, basically. This is to win the division. I like Minnesota at home. I don't this line was more than I thought it would be. Like I think well, we both we thought, think this is to win the division. I'm not really sure about all the tiebreakers. I don't know about all the tiebreakers. We think they're both gonna win next week divisional yeah. games. And then they'll end up with the same record. The exact same record and the same divisional record. with And, and they'll split. And head to head. So we'll we'll see. I don't know all the tiebreakers. I should have known those before tonight. But we'll, hey, we'll get it figured out by next week. It'll be all right. Yeah. But, uh, but either way, it, this is four and a half now. Five in some spots. Now, obviously, my book's got four and a half, so I'm going to take the four and a half. But it, the, you would think with a... A Packers team that has won what eleven games? Mm -hmm. You would think that even going on the road, at most, it would be a field goal, and instead, we have got a four and a half point or five point line. I think maybe Vegas is trying to tell you something here. I think a lot of people are going to be loading up on the Packers. 
I'm going Vikings all day. I think they will be able to score points, not necessarily at will, but much more uh, frequently than the Packers will. Aaron Rodgers has been fine, but he ain't got a ton of weapons. And this Vikings offense, with Stefanski and Kubiak and that whole bunch running running the show, they look so much better this year. I mean, so much better. And I like Kirk Cousins, especially at home here. Uh, give me the Vikings minus four and a half for a hundred dollars. I I think they're going to win the game. I think they're going to win pretty handily. Yeah, I do too. I, I mean, I I like that pick. It scares me to give this defense Aaron Rodgers that big of a head start. It just does. I understand, and I think that's why most people are going to be on it. Yeah, but uh, we have seen the Packers go on the road and get trounced. Correct. Numerous times. Correct. So against teams that play great defense. And the Vikings have got a great defense. Yeah. If so, you have a good defensive line, that's where they have struggled. You got that right. Struggled against 49ers, great defensive front. Struggled against uh the 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 Chargers, great defensive front. I mean, those 100%. are the games where they get beat up. You're right. You have got that right. All right. So right now, our picks are out. They're done. You can go check out the gambling pick section on the website and see exactly what we have taken. But right now, the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter, he is TJ Reeves. Every single week he joins us from his beautiful abode down in Florida. He is TJ Reeves. <laughs> he is the uh, he is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers sideline reporter. He is the host of the Three Dog Thursday podcast, which you can get at any of your favorite podcast distributors tj your bucks are doing fantastic man uh four straight tell me about uh tell me about detroit what what happened we love happy post game shows for the buccaneers first of all good to be with you it is my humble abode because humbly right now i come to you and say uh pre-christmas present pre-holiday gift to have four consecutive happy post game shows for the post game host to go in the locker room and talk to the guys about about getting these wins so that was a lot of fun it was freezing cold for me and i remember in florida we're weak anything below 50 degrees we're bringing the pets in the plants in we're in the heavy coats we're up we're up in the 25 degree weather with the snow coming down but luckily we were inside ford field oh yeah and that's good because the stench of the lions did not uh, infiltrate the rest of the country because it was self-contained inside of Ford Field. I, I mean to tell you, I've been around some bad Buccaneer teams, and this may predate you guys because you're a little younger, but Lehman Bennett was the coach of the Bucks in the mid-1980s when they won four games. The former Falcons coach who did very well for the Falcons like in the late 1970s and early 80s, he came to the Buccaneers. He won four games in the mid-80s in two seasons, and it was horrific almost expansion level football. I am here to testify at the altar of the winning cures, everything podcast. The (laughs) lions are every bit as bad as their team that didn't win a game back in 2008. They are awful. Uh, I know they have won three games, but they've lost seven straight. They are playing guys off the street. I mean, the quarterback, David Blau, was not even a starter at Purdue in college. He's trying, but, I mean, they're playing – Brother Giannini, they're playing offensive linemen that they picked up last week. They played a running back that they picked up on Friday. Now, granted, he scored a couple of touchdowns on short runs, uh, but (laughs) it's just – it's bad in Detroit. And what is that line in Denver? I am not taking the Lions for three dog Thursday, but I think I saw Denver's only what, like a touchdown, touchdown or seven. six? It's a touchdown. Seven. Yep. That how is that not fifteen or nineteen? They are that bad. Now I'm saying all this now. Watch them win the game. Watch the Lions go win the game in Denver. <laughs> but they they are not good. Uh, the sign, I think, maybe of the year in the NFL. The fan sign of the year potentially. Behind the Buccaneer bench as we were getting ready to leave, a guy in a green Aaron Rodgers number 12 Packer jersey at the Lions game. Not a Buccaneers jersey, not a Lions jersey. He's in a green Packers uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers jersey holding up a white poster board where he scribbled out, Extend Patricia. (laughs) They want to keep him (laughs) in the NFC North. Classic sign. I should have snapped a photo and put it up on winningcureseverything.com for you guys, but... Uh, they're, they're just bad. So I'm harping on that one. Stay away from the Lions. 
Um, it's it's uh, 10 losses in 11 games. Not good there for them. And my Buccaneers put it on them. And here, here again, Jameis Winston throws for 458 yards in the game. Guys, he had 221 yards in the first quarter. Oh, yeah. I'm standing there against the Lions going, this is going to be a 500-yard game. If Detroit can put a couple of touchdowns on the board, he is going to throw for five bills like we were talking about before. Oh, yeah. And he came up with 458. It was incredible. 458 is pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, and, and very comparable <laughs> exactly. to uh, – that. Let, let's talk about Monday night. Let's talk about Drew Brees. Oh. Uh, oh. Divisional opponent, obviously. But he yep. sets – now, it, Chris brought this up to me earlier – in our preview show, it, he said, did you find it funny or were you a little irritated that they came in and wiped off the record-breaking touchdown? <laughs> like, was that not the most fitting thing you have right. ever seen from the NFL referees? Well, he threw one, and, and yeah, there we go again, that uh, the officials, when they get the opportunity right now, are going to stick it to the Saints. They're human beings, and you know all this <laughs> protest, the Super Bowl stuff, and show up in the first Monday night game wearing referees' jerseys and fake flags and blowing fake whistles. Uh, they're human beings. So, yeah, it, it is interesting. They wiped off the first broken uh, touchdown, breaking touchdown pass from Drew Brees in the first half, and he eventually got it, obviously, later in the game. I find it fascinating. I totally understand it. It's a regular season honor. But Tom Brady has like 40 more touchdowns than Drew Brees when you add the postseason. So yep. what are we talking about here? Because yeah, he's right behind him for the, <laughs> quote, air quotes, regular season. But overall, those touchdowns still count in the postseason, too. So I understand there's a postseason award book and record book, and then there's a regular season one. Uh, it's still amazing uh, the numbers that are being put up. Uh, by these guys in the modern NFL over the last 10 years or so. so and where where are we heading with all the yardage and all the touchdowns throwing the football? It's it's incredible. And uh, I was surprised uh, one of our handicappers had the Colts on Monday. I thought they would hang in, but, man, Breeze and the Saints were angry. You knew they would be after they lost that crazy game last week to the 49ers, and they just put it on them. But that could lead me to something on three-dog Thursday here, brother Giannini. I might be feeling right just north of you, up I forty from the from the uh, the Greater Memphis and Mississippi area in Nashville. Those Tennessee Titans playing the Saints. That one very interesting for Three Dog Thursday, where the Titans have to win for playoff position, for potential division. Saints off the emotional game, short week, easy win. That's that's attractive for Three Dog Thursday. We'll be talking about it. Yeah, I like that game, and and we talk about it in our in our gambling picks and in our uh, our preview that that's going to be you know not the greatest weather for a for a dome team going out there. It's going to be cold. It's probably going to be rainy, or if not rainy, it had been raining, um, and and it's not going to be a, a pretty. It will not be ideal circumstances that's right. for the no. for Breeze and 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 his forty year old arm. So yeah, it's interesting. Uh, now let's let's talk about somewhere else that's going to be cold weather. Philadelphia catching mm. three points. They uh, <laughs> they're at home against the Cowboys. This is for the division. Now, well, how about the the cardiac Eagles that have won in overtime at home to overcome Eli and the Giants in overtime, and then last week in the final seconds to win at Washington. And I, I don't know, I haven't heard the beginning of you guys' show. I look forward to hearing you all the time. So at the time that we're talking right now, I haven't heard what your take was on Dallas just freight training the Rams, especially Ezekiel Elliott on the, on the ground. Was that an aberration? Was that uh, something, that an anomaly, that, that out of bad football they've been playing over the last five, six weeks, they suddenly broke out once, and now they're going to go back to being the Cowboys that we've seen the last few weeks? I don't know what you guys' take is well, on that. What is I, your take on that? We, we disagree on this one. Yeah, we, we disagree a little bit. I So, the Cowboys over the Rams last week was was easy. Uh, one, I had the game, but it was – and I, I didn't take it for the reasons that But Chris did you saw. seriously see 44 points no, coming, Gary? No, I no, mean, no, no, no. Lord, they, uh, they've had trouble scoring 44 points in three games. <laughs> no, I, I did not see that. Uh, but what I did see was – the Cowboys are not a terrible football team. They have lost a the majority of their losses are to really good teams. And and I'll tell you a little secret: the Rams are not a really good football team. 
They're just not. So the, he the uses, book has he uses written his on words it. like majority because he forgets that they got the hell beat out of them by the Jets. No, I don't forget. That's why I said majority. <laughs> but, but, but that's it. he wants us to forget that and and not think about it. And, and well, I don't, but let's be honest. Let's be honest. My Buccaneers went out there in September and torched Wade Phillips' defense. Jameis lit yeah. them up. The Ravens came in with Lamar Jackson on Monday Night Football and destroyed them. Ooh, so yeah. this was not – I mean, yes, uh, the the Cowboys deserve some credit, but the the Rams' defense is not what it was. And, again, they they are one of those teams right now that may be in the wrong place at the wrong time playing an angry San Francisco team on Saturday night in that game. And I don't – again, I don't know how much of that was the Cowboys being great or the Rams having bad defense to get back to the Cowboys in Philadelphia. And the division is on the line here. Philly realizes if we don't win this game – that more than likely we're, I mean, we're, we're not going to win the division because then the Cowboys have to lose to the Redskins uh, the following week at home. So this is essentially a playoff game for Philadelphia at home here yeah. in this one, and we'll look at it strongly on Three Dog Thursday. I'm with you. I, I, I struggle with this one. The only way I would, I would lean Cowboys would be if when both of these teams play at their very best, I think the Cowboys are better. But that is – that is a big if you get the great Cowboys. Because if you don't get the great Cowboys, they could lose to any one of the 31 other teams. Yeah. Well, and they've, yeah, they've, they've demonstrated with that loss to the Jets, like you were mentioning, and uh, their struggles offensively, uh, that, that they are vulnerable. Let's put it that way. And it is going to be hostile in Philadelphia. They, they have a chance here. Uh, a puncher's chance to win this game, win the division. Everybody's been making fun of it, and then host a playoff game potentially against either San Francisco or Seattle. It would look like as the five seed, whoever doesn't win the West. So, Eagles and Cowboys will definitely get a lot of attention. Now, uh, I, I will say that last week on the show, uh, I did come up with a couple of the underdogs. I had the Texans against the Titans yep. uh, on the road. I also had the Falcons. I didn't see the outright win, but man, what a great what a great fourth quarter Atlanta played to win at the end at San Francisco. And, and we, brother we Giannini, on that one. yeah, I, we we had that. And brother Giannini had the Buffalo Bills. Uh, how about them with the Sunday night win against the Steelers? Now the, the Bills against your Patriots. We've talked about this for a couple of weeks now, where the AFC East is kind of still in play here. Is that one concerning you for Saturday afternoon, Brother Giannini? Oh, 100%. There's no, there's no way on earth I would touch the Pats. And and if I didn't love the Pats, I would be on the I'd be on the Bills pretty big, I think. And, and it's strictly a thing where I I like the under in this game. It's 38. When I think the total is going to be around 20 points, laying six and a half to somebody <laughs> is a lot of points when like when you lay six and a half and you think the total is going to be in the forties or the fifties, then yeah, that's no big deal. You could bust that pretty easily. If you think the total is going to be in the twenties, six and a half is a lot of points to give up. Yep. Well, and, and the Patriots obviously pulled away, but they were struggling in the first half with the Bengals last week, but this is, this is when they take advantage of things and they still see the opportunity to, to not only host a playoff game, but maybe get the bye on the first weekend in the AFC playoffs if well, they can find a way to win this one against Buffalo. Right. So if they win this one, man. they're going to beat the Dolphins next week at New England. No they, question. And then, therefore, they nope. have they have one game up on the Chiefs, so they, they would still get the bye week. And if the Ravens <laughs> happen to lose, right. then, they, then they get the one seed. Well, you yeah. need the Ravens to lose twice. You yeah, would need the Ravens right. to lose twice. They Correct on that. But in this – in this in this case, though, I mean, again, we've been shoveling dirt on the Cowboys, and if they find a way to win on Sunday, they're in the playoffs. They're we've been right. shoveling some dirt on the on the Patriots. <laughs> Lo and behold, like you were laying out, they're going to they could still be the number one seed. They could be the two seed for sure, and maybe even the number one seed with a win on Sunday. And uh, and Bravo, I know I know there are bowl games this weekend, and you guys are doing a show on that. But the NFL moving those games, including my Buccaneers leading it off with the Texans on Saturday, followed by Patriots, Bills, 49ers, Rams. They all have playoff implications. They're all standalone games. So that's going to be that's going to be a lot of fun on Saturday. Kind of as the I don't even know that that can be considered an appetizer. That's like a three course meal before we get to the Sunday game. Hundred percent. I, I think Saturday's games are better than Sunday's games. 
I mean, if, if you told yeah. me you got to pick a day to watch football and the other day you got to do chores, you, you got to spend time with the family. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I think, and I know your Bucks are one of these Sunday games. I know you're, you're the Saturday early game. Yeah, Saturday, I, right, the I first think, game with Houston. I think I would rather watch three games on Saturdays knowing I get all three of all the games and I'm not flipping back and forth and I don't have some weird, you know, do I catch this play, do I miss that play, and, and give me all of those games – and I'll pack it in for Sunday, and that yeah. means I'm missing. Well, and, the and in the case, okay in the and in the case of those three games, just one more time, with the exception of my Buccaneers, who've been eliminated now because they can't get to a tenth win for a tiebreaker in the NFC playoffs. Most they can get is nine. Uh, the other five teams all have something to very much play for, whether it's the division or their playoff lives, that's right. and that's why those games were moved there. So that's a lot of intrigue, and that's what you're saying, and. Do do we dare touch some of those teams on Three Dog Thursday? We'll be discussing it, boys. We'll find out. Absolutely. Of course, he is TJ Reeves from the Three Dog Thursday podcast. You can find him on Twitter at Buck Sideline Guy. And he is the Tampa Bay Buccaneer sideline reporter. So make sure you listen in. You guys have a, a, a tune in channel or something, right? Or do they That's listen correct. on the NFL? You can app? find the, uh, the Buccaneers tune in channel as well through the, uh, through the mobile app. And. Uh, again, through Buccaneers.com and the mobile app. I do a podcast for them and some different stuff. So we're excited about Saturday, back home Saturday, and for the final two against the Texans and the Falcons. The Buccaneers trying to win five straight, trying to deny the Texans the AFC South. Tennessee Titan fans are big Buccaneer fans for Saturday before they play oh, yes. their game with the Saints. That's right. We'll see what happens in, uh, in that matchup. And Gary Seegers, I look forward to you being with me on Three Dog Thursday, because I do believe in looking at my notations here, Gary was three for three the last time on Three Dog Thursday a couple of weeks ago. I'm looking forward to having you this week on the show. I might have set the bar a little too high. <laughs> we will find out. Get those hounds ready, brother. We Absolutely. will find out. No, we can definitely do that. Of course, like I said, Three Dog Thursday podcast. Go make sure you subscribe. Leave them a nice review. Tell them we sent you. TJ, we always appreciate you hopping in, buddy. Viva la underdogs. Good to be with you, boys. All right, we appreciate TJ for hopping in here with us. Always a good time. You can find him on Twitter, at Buck Sideline Guy. Uh, he is a lot of fun. He's been with us every week this football season. He will be with us again next week. Uh, it, it should be a good time. should be a good time. So go to winningcureseverything.com. You can find everything about us over there, our social media platforms, all of our picks, podcasts, previews, videos, etc. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure and comment. Tell us what your picks are this week. We want to see what you do. We want to see how you guys are doing. Uh, we haven't had the best season, but we are having fun with it. So you can go back for the last four years, see how we've done. Uh, it's never been this bad, but uh, hey, it's all right. You know, we're still having fun with it. That's so right. We're here. We, uh, we, if, you, if you do this long enough, you will always have a bad year. I guarantee it. It, it's just the way it falls sometimes. So, uh, as always, go over to smackapparel.com, use promo code WIN, W-I-N, and get a 20% discount on however big your order is. And if it's over $40, they're going to ship it to you for free. Smackapparel.com is the website, and the promo code is WIN, W-I-N. And make sure and check out tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. they got six incredible sports books. Go over to that website. You can find more information about them over there at tunicatravel.com. I think that's going to wrap it up. Anything else? Wonderful. We will see you all again next time. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.